Number one, Auburn went into Fayetteville and took themselves a loss in overtime tonight. We're going to be joined by Arkansas head coach Eric Musselman here in just a minute. Uh, but before we get to that, Sean, I'm going to hit you first on this one, man. What was your biggest takeaway uh, from Arkansas's win? Not to take anything away from, uh, from Arkansas, you know, when you're the number one team in America and you think about some of the recent games Auburn ha has played, Rob, and it seems like they've almost played them in a row, you know, as evidenced by how Georgia took them to the wire uh, most recently, you know, it, it can beat you down. They, to me, they just look physically just almost like they need to take a deep breath. Maybe this loss can kind of take a little bit of the pressure off and can kind of get back to some things maybe that they were doing better earlier. In particular, I didn't think Auburn tonight was as good as they've been sharing the ball, you know, moving it, making the one more pass. And uh, there were just so many possessions there towards the end of the game that that ended up doing them in, not because uh, Arkansas isn't an outstanding defensive team, but it almost, hey, look, when you play against a team that is like that defensively, you really better be on it and moving the ball. And tonight, I didn't think they were at their best. Yeah, Arch, how much of that was a result of what Arkansas was doing defensively and how much of that was just, you know, Wendell Green sometimes becomes a little bit shot happy? Well, you have to give Arkansas's defense a lot of credit. You know, one of the reasons that they've caught fire and have won nine in a row, I believe, their defense has really turned the corner and started to become one of the best in the country. And, you know, really, to be honest with you, probably right now, maybe the best in SEC play. And uh, they took Alabama out of a lot of their stuff. There was a lot of pressure out there and uh, resulted in, you know, Auburn playing with eight assists, 19 turnovers. And, you know, Wendell Green has to play 38 minutes without Jasper tonight, and he has seven turnovers as a point guard on the road in that environment. And uh, multiple guys, though, for, for Auburn turned the ball over. Eight assists, 19 turnovers on the road in that environment. But I think you have to give Arkansas a lot of credit because uh, their winning streak and what they're doing really starts right now. They The mindset defensively to – you know, take you out of what you're doing and the quickness on the floor. And uh, they've done a great job. Right. And, you know, back to my point, and really I should have started with it, you know, missing their point guard, Auburn. I mean, you've, you felt that a little bit too. If you think about kind of what, what we talked about, the ball got stuck, it didn't move. And, and at times I thought that they, they didn't get the ball to, to Jabari when they usually do. You know, you start taking the, that head of the snake away from your team, the guy that, that you count on to do it, who has a big role in that area of playmaking. Um, it can certainly affect that. But, uh, you know, that and Kessler, by the way, if what Auburn would have won, what a great game. I mean, his free throw shooting hurt Auburn. You know, he went to the line, I think, missed four in a row. But if you look at his blocks, rebounds, and points in that game, 16, it shows you how talented. 16, 16, 19, and seven blocks. Yeah, you, it shows you how talented he yeah. is. He is a difference maker. And I think that's one reason why we're looking at Auburn as the number one team in the country because they have so, so much athleticism and so many things already going for them. To put that seven foot shot blocker in the middle, Rob, you know, now that takes them to a completely another level. Yeah, I can't remember if it was you guys that, that was talking about this. I think it might have been you, Arch, but Walker Kessler at some point has to get some buzz for the uh, for for national player of the year or for national defensive player of the year. But definitely, I think that we're, yeah. yeah. We're, we're about to be joined here by Eric Musselman, but, but go ahead and finish your point on, on definitely that. national That's defensive player of the year, SEC defensive player of the year. Um, Auburn's defense is based around him, his shot blocking and conference play, and their teams you know, ability to force things to him. But what he's done defensively for Auburn and him individually, how he dictates things in games, to me, he has to be a guy that's considered, you know, if not the national defensive player of the year, one of them, and definitely in the SEC, he's he's got to get that nod, I would think, as of today. Yeah, so we're, we're going to be joined here in a minute by Eric Musselman, the Arkansas head coach. They are coming off of an 80-76 to 76 win uh, in Fayetteville over number one, uh, Auburn. And uh, they're improved to 19 and five on the season. The huge win uh, for the Razorbacks. I believe that is now eight consecutive wins for them. They've really kind of been able to turn this thing around. Friend um, yeah. Yeah. And I think, and we are, we are joined by, uh, by coach Musselman here. Coach what's going on. And Rob Doster, Archie Miller, Sean Miller. How you doing? Congrats. I'm on the doing win. good. Appreciate you guys having me on. 
So I, I got to ask you, man, you guys have hit a winning streak again at the right time in the season. Uh, what's what's changed? How did you figure it out this year? Well, you know, I think uh, for us, we, we weren't defending like we, you know, are capable of or, or what we've defended in the past. And we we changed our starting lineup. We went with a bigger lineup, a, a stronger lineup. A DC Tony was actually playing the small forward slash power forward for us. And we slid him to the starting off guard. And then we inserted Trey Wade into the starting lineup, a transfer from Wichita State at the four spot. And then we slid uh, Stanley Amudi, who was playing the power forward, to the small forward. So we actually, you know, most teams downsized. We actually went with the biggest lineup that we possibly could. Hey, Coach Muss, it's uh, it's Sean. How you doing? I'm doing great, Coach Miller. How are you? Hey, when the... I got to ask you, when they called the Hogs tonight with that crowd, you got to you got to admit, even you who's used to it, it almost felt scary on TV. Did you get that sense? <laughs> well, I, I, you know, there's only so many uh, arenas that can get that loud. And, and um, you know, I'm 57 years old, Coach Miller, and, and, and that was the, you know, loudest building that I've ever been a part of. Um, it, it was it, it, it really yeah. was. I mean, it was and, and the building was shaking before the game. We were back in the locker room and our locker room is, is very close to the student section. It was literally shaking uh, right before we went out with about two minutes prior to tip off. Yeah, no, it was you could just so you know, you could really feel it on TV. You know, sometimes when you watch that game on television, it looks like a big crowd, but you really can't tell. Tonight, watching the Arkansas-Auburn game, you almost felt like you were at the game. And then when I saw them call the Hogs and, and I heard the crowd, it was it was an eerie, eerie call. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have one basketball question for you, all right? I watch you play a lot and big fan of you as a coach and how you guys defend. But, you know, you've emerged now. You're the number one defensive team in the SEC. And uh, this year, to say that this year is quite a statement when you look around your league and some of the great defensive teams that you're with. And yet, you know, when you're coaching your team, three-point shooting obviously is your, your Achilles or, or to this point is the thing that's probably you wish you could make more of them or how can we generate more of them. But when you're coaching your guys, just knowing that you're the number one defensive team and you're like, how do I generate points? How do I become more efficient offensively? What is it that like right now, that, that you, you're conveying to your team and, and that you do maybe perhaps a little bit more or less in practice right now? Yeah, I think from a defensive standpoint, Coach, we just, you know, we became so much bigger. And sometimes we do give up some threes because, you know, we're a little bit uh, laterally challenged from a quickness standpoint at certain positions when teams downsize. But offensively, we just got to continue to move the basketball a little bit more at times. And it's my fault. You know, I, I'm, I'm so used to the NBA game and we have so many sets that are quick hitters or isolations uh, that at times we get to standing around too much. And, and th those are some of the things behind closed doors that we try and to continue to improve on from an offensive standpoint. Yeah. Coach Musk, this is Arch. Congratulations on the big win and, also, how, how you guys are playing right now. There's nobody playing better, um, not only in the SEC, but the country. So congrats on that. And uh, I just want to ask you how your shoulder's doing. And as long <laughs> as you keep winning, regardless of how your shoulder feels, are you going to keep that strap and that brace on all year? <laughs> well, thanks, Coach Miller. We, You know, I had rotator cuff surgery, and I'm, I'm three weeks in, um, and we haven't lost since we, I actually, we right. actually beat we beat Missouri the game before the surgery. Um, and so I got three more weeks. I hope we could keep winning. I got three more weeks of, of being in the sling and then the rehab starts. And the, the greatest thing is, you, you know, you can't sleep after, after a loss. Well, I, I haven't slept very much just cause I'm in a recliner. So uh, it's certainly good to not sleep after wins instead of the L's. No question. And from, a, from, from your team's perspective, I think the, the, the nation should have been put on notice uh, tonight about JT Note and he's what good. He's, how good he is, what he means to your team. But just talk a little bit about him and, and where he's at and what he means to what you're doing right now. Yeah, I think, Coach Miller, the, the thing with JD Note is he's improved so much. He was a 
He was a good player from Jacksonville. He got an opportunity to sit out. He was a high volume scorer at a, at a lower uh, level. And so we've really tried to work with him from a player development standpoint to become more of a point guard. And he's still learning. He's still, he's still on the job learning how to be a, a, a ball distributor. But from a scoring standpoint and an isolation standpoint, he's as good as any guard in the country one-on-one. -on -one. For instance, last year when we were in, in the Elite Eight, he was the one guy that could go get his own shot against that great Baylor defensive team. So, J and JD's a much, much, much underrated defender. He's one of the highest steel players uh, in the SEC. He always guards uh, one of the top perimeter two players on the opposing team, and uh, a really, really great competitor. And he and he's got great toughness as well. He must. Uh, the one thing I just say it too. Like I thought tonight, what you just said. He he really wore down at times Wendell Green. Like, and you just the guy he was on. And you know, I thought his size and physicality on defense had a wearing down effect on Auburn. You know, when you guys got to late in the game and then overtime, you had more gas in your tank than they did. That's what it appeared. And and I credit a lot of that to your ball pressure. No, I, I we really appreciate that, Coach Miller, because you know, oftentimes some of the things that, that people will say is we have such a short rotation, we're going to run out of gas. And and we feel exactly like you just mentioned, that that we are a physical team, that, that we spend so much time in the offseason trying to be in great physical condition so that we only have to play seven or eight guys. Um, and we feel like a guy like J.D. Note, even though if he gets tired, um, that he can try to wear the other opposing guards off because he does have great physicality. He's got great strength, um, you know, and, and his ability uh, to pick the ball up full court certainly can wear people down throughout the course of a 40-minute game or like tonight, even a 45-minute game. Yeah. Well, listen, Mus, I appreciate the time uh, that you're giving us. I, I want to let you go celebrate, but I do need one favor from you. Do you think you can help me out with something? I can help you out, Rob. What is it, man? <laughs> all right. So Jeff Goodman is listening right now, and he he's doubted the Hogs all season long. I, I just want to know if you have any messages for Jeff Goodman. No, it's all good. We we've uh, you know, we were you know hyped up early in the year. Uh, we were trying to figure out our rotations. Uh, we we think we figured it out. We still have a really 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 hard schedule to end the year, uh, but certainly just as last year, we hit stride at the right time. Um, we, we know that at some point the streak's, you know, going to end. We just want to try to continue to play as good as we can and continue to try to improve and get ready for SEC tournament play. That's a much more diplomatic answer than your fans on Twitter right now. Coach Muss, <laughs> I appreciate the time, man. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. It's great catching up. Hey, keep, yeah, yeah. Yeah. keep it keep it going, keep going. Coach. Good, good win. Hey, well, thanks, coaches. Appreciate it.